Hello, Algebra 1 students. This is Mrs. Yowd. Today I'm going to do Chapter 7, Lesson 3, which is about special products of polynomials. Please open up your journals to page 216. So this method really appeals to people if they like to find shortcuts for special types. So here we have a square of a binomial pattern. So if you have either a plus b quantity squared or a minus b quantity squared, then there is a shortcut for finding the answer. So you take the first term and you square it, and then the first and second multiplied together and then multiplied by 2, it goes in the middle, and then the last term squared. Uh, and the same thing is true for if there's a minus sign instead, the only difference is, is that your middle term will be negative. And so here are some examples. So I'm going to show you why that works. Uh, so let's go ahead and do a plus b quantity squared. So that's going to be the same as a plus b multiplied by a plus b. And so what's going to happen, let's go ahead and use the distributive method. So I'm going to multiply these together and I get a squared. And then we have a times b, so that's a b. Second, we have b times a. I'm going to switch it around and do a b again. And then b times b is b squared. So you'll notice what happened is I have a final answer of a squared plus, and notice that there are two of the a b's. So we're going to write 2a b. And lastly, I have a b squared here, so that's plus b squared. So once again, it's just it's a shortcut way of doing, basically you can go straight from here to the answer if you know the shortcut. If you don't want to memorize the shortcut, then please feel free to draw it out that way and use the distributive method before you get your final answer. It takes a little bit longer, but it is um, a surefire way to make sure that it's correct because if you happen to make a mistake thinking that you know the shortcut and you actually don't know it, then it could be a problem. Um, let's go ahead and I'll show you why this one works that way. So this time I'm going to use the box method. So a minus b squared. So if we have our uh, box or table method here, I have a minus b on both the top and the bottom or the side, excuse me. So now if we multiply in, we have a times a is a squared. Then this is going to be minus a b and minus a b. And negative b times negative b is positive b squared. So then the final answer would be a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. Once again, if you know the shortcut, you can go straight from this uh, question to the final answer. Or if you don't want to risk it and you want to do the extra work, uh, you can go ahead and do that, especially if it's a test or quiz. That's not a, not a bad idea. So the second type of special um, patterns is the sum and a difference pattern. So if you have the exact same terms that's adding on one of the binomials and that's subtracting on the other binomial, then the shortcut is that you can just say, say that's going to be a squared minus b squared. So I'm going to show you why that works. So let's go ahead and do the whole problem out. So this is a plus b times a minus b. So I'm going to go ahead and use the distributive method this time. So it's a squared minus a b. And then the other one will have b times a, but I'm going to flip it around and do uh, a b just so that it's the same as the one before it. And then b times negative b would be negative b squared. Now notice what happens here is when we combine like terms, we have a negative term and a positive that it's exactly the same, which means that these are going to cancel out. And our final answer is going to be a squared minus b squared. So again, if you know the trick, you can go straight from the question to the final answer. So in numbers here, if we had an x plus 3 and then an x minus 3, 
then the final answer would be x squared minus 9. And the reason why is, once again, if we multiplied those two together, we would get negative 3x. And if we multiplied these together, we get positive 3x. And notice that they would cancel each other out, which is why that middle term disappears. OK, let's take a look at these problems. So if we want to use the trick, we're going to take our first term and square it, so it'll be a squared, and our last term and square it, so it'll be 3 squared. And then the middle term is going to be 2 multiplied by the first term a multiplied by the last term 3. So that'll be 6a. OK, so to write my final answer, it would be a squared plus 6a plus 9. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at number 4. I'm going to take my first term and square it, so it'll be negative 2x squared. And my last term and square it, so it'd be 1 squared, it's positive. And then my middle term is going to be 2 multiplied by the first term multiplied by the last term. So that's going to be a negative 4x. OK, so let's simplify that. So that will be positive 4x squared minus 4x plus 1. All right, let's do one more. I'll do number 6. So on number 6, we have our first term squared. So it'll be negative 4p squared. Our last term squared, which is negative 3 squared, and our middle term is going to be 2 multiplied by the first term multiplied by the last term. So it's going to be positive, so we have 8 times 3, so it's 24p, and then I'm going to put a plus here. So now let's simplify that. So our final answer is going to be 16p squared plus 24p, and then we have plus 9 as our final answer for number 6. Why don't you go ahead and try numbers 2, 3, and 5 on your own. For number 2, I got b squared minus 4b plus 4. For number 3, c squared plus 8c plus 16. And for number 5, I got 9x squared minus 12x plus 4. Please, if you made any mistakes, see if you can find them. Let's take a look at number 9. I'm going to take my first term, and so that's going to be negative 4c squared. My last term, which is 5d, all quantity squared. And my middle term will be 2 times negative 4c times positive 5d. So that's going to give me 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. And then multiplied by 5 is negative 40. And then I have CD. So then my final answer would be 16C squared minus 40CD and then plus 25D squared. In the past, I've gotten questions from students about if this is in standard form. And there are some differing schools of thought. I can tell you that if you put it in just like this, then it would be correct on Big Ideas Math. And I think because this has a degree of 2, and if you think about it, this also has a degree of 2 because there's one here and one here. And if we add those together, it would be a degree of 2. And then this also has a degree of 2. So generally, when you have if the same degree amongst three of the terms inside of a trinomial, you want to write them in alphabetical order. So I would say that this actually is in standard form here. OK, I'd like for you to do numbers 7 and 8 only, please. OK, here's what I got for numbers 7 and 8. Please check your answers. And if you got any mistakes, see if you can find them. For numbers 10, 11, and 12, we're moving on to the other type of pattern, which is the sum and difference pattern. Remember, on this one, if we multiplied the outside numbers together, we're going to get 3x. And then these will give us negative 3x, so it's going to cancel out. And so what we're ended up with uh, having here would just be the first terms multiplied together, 
which would be x squared, and then the last terms multiplied together, which is negative 9 in this case, because it would be 3 squared. So that's the answer for number 10. Let's take a look at number 12. We have t times t, so it'll be t squared. And then 11 times 11 is 121, so it'd be minus 121. Once again, if we were to multiply the other ones together, they would end up canceling out. Go ahead and do number 11 on your own. For number 11, I got q squared minus 25. Okay, let's take a look at these problems here. Let's try number 15. So on number 15, I'm going to multiply the two, the one half c and square it. And then the other ones are going to be the one third, and that's going to also be squared, and there's a minus sign in between. So one half times one half is one fourth. So this will be one fourth c squared minus one third times one third is one ninth. And so that is my answer for number 15. Let's take a look at number 17. I'm going to go and do the first term. So we have negative 3j. We need to square it. And then we're going to subtract that and do the second term, which is 2k, and then square it. So that will be positive 9j squared minus 4k squared. And that is my answer for number 17. I'm going to do one more with you because number 18 is a little bit strange. It's not quite written how we're used to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip both of them around so it looks more like what we're used to. So this is the same as 1 half b plus 6a. And then the other one would be 1 half b minus 6a. Ah, that looks a little bit better. So we will have 1 half b squared minus, and then the second term will be 6a squared. So we have 1 fourth b squared minus, then we have 36a squared. Now I do need to flip it around to put it back into standard form because I want to go alphabetical with my, exp with my variables. So we negative 36a squared first, and then plus 1 fourth b squared next, and that is the answer that will be correct. Okay, I'd like for you to do numbers 13, 14, and 15 on your own. Okay, please check your answers for number 13, 14, and 16. We're going to skip the rest of the page for this video. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching.